So here we're talking about disaster recovery and business continuity, specifically plans that are associated with both of those. I want to tell you something. It's a big secret. <laughs> and the big secret was in the early days of IT, in the 80s and 90s and up until the last decade in the 2000s, disaster planning didn't really exist. Obviously, disasters happened. There was no business continuity plans, if you will, in place either from an IT perspective. IT really wasn't thought of that way. So business continuity has to do with business management procedures that will bring things back to normal. This whole BCP, business continuity plan, and DRP, disaster plan, are both designed, supposed to be designed, to bring things back to normal in the event of a disaster or a catastrophe. There are many things inside of that, too many things to name, but some of them, as far as uh, planning goes, or contingency planning goes, you really have to think about what is meant by disaster when you're planning for a contingency, when you're putting a contingency plan together for resiliency associated with your company's infrastructure because business cannot go down? What are you doing for your disaster recovery plan, for the continuity of your operations, for the business, for crisis communication, do you have something in place that would allow you to communicate with your team in the event of a catastrophe? Your critical infrastructure protection is also a big piece of that puzzle. What about occupant emergency? Your IS contingency as a whole, and what is your cyber incident response? Is, is somebody dealing with that? The contingency planning and resilience is a big piece of the equation. For the better part of the last uh, decade and a half, organizations have spent tremendous amount of resources to make certain that their critical infrastructure is protected. Their components, their hardware, their equipment, their devices and databases and information and hosts and such are all protected, that they are able to continue operations in the event of a disaster, that they remain resilient. Very important. So what happens in the event of a business continuity and disaster recovery? Well, you need to be able to get from a disaster to Continuity of operations very, very fast, depending on what you're dealing with. And BCP leads to the disaster recovery plan. These are both plans that have to be in place. The more detailed and up-to-date they are, the better it is. Think about the number of systems that you have in place and the business continuity plan that you have to put in place in order to make certain that you're able to respond to a disaster and being able to bring things back to normal really quickly. Your business management procedures in the event that your disaster happens, your continuity strategy, your risk assessment. If something was to happen, what is the risk? How are you gonna mitigate it? How are you gonna mitigate exposure? How are you gonna prevent stuff from being stolen, hacked? Are you gonna be vulnerable in the event of a disaster? And if so, who is your team that's making certain that you are not vulnerable, that you are still secure? What happens in the case of crisis? Is your communication secured? What if you can't have mobile access and phone access and there's no internet? What is your means of crisis communication? What is your means of making certain that you have a response for a cyber incident? an attack incident? What if a hacker does break into your environment and shuts everything down or removes everything? Can they do that? Can you recover from that? Can you continue business as usual? These are 
just some of the very key components associated with disaster recovery and business continuity plan. 